Hey Lennies, welcome back to our channel where all things bunny are made possible. Now, have you ever wondered why pet bunnies are so darn cute? Why their big eyes, fluffy cheeks, and wiggly noses triggers a release of dopamine and oxytocin in the human brain? Well, we made them that way. In today's video, we're gonna be examining a brief history of the domestication of rabbits. Now I searched far and wide and there's not a single video on YouTube on this topic. So as per usual, I'm going to swoop right into the rescue and put bunnies on the map. After all, they are the third most popular indoor pet in the world. Before we begin, please subscribe, smash that like button, and hit the bell for unlimited bunny content. Okay, so when it comes to domestication, researchers will often look to physical clues like floppy ears and dogs, which are visible traits associated with desirable features like a less aggressive personality. But these physical or genetic markers don't always tell the whole story. All modern pet bunnies come from the species Erectilagus caniculus, also known as the wild European rabbit, which likely roamed the south of France and northeast Spain for several million years. In a 2014 study published in Science Magazine, it was revealed that during the last glacial maximum, which was roughly 18,000 years ago, the advancing glaciers likely pushed the French bunnies back into Spain. Once the ice retreated, rabbits returned to France with the marks of this population shift still discernible in their DNA. Our modern domesticated rabbits all evolved from the French populations, but this still doesn't give us an exact time or event in which the split actually occurred. The research team at Oxford applied their method of DNA modeling to comb through the genome of modern wild and tame French bunnies. And while there's no exact time or event, what the analysis suggested was that the split occurred between 12,200 and 17,700 years ago, long before any previous records suggest intense human and bunny interaction. And some archeological evidence suggests that people have been dining on rabbits anywhere from 10,000 to 20,000 years ago. So very similar to what the analysis uncovered. The earliest written records that we have of keeping rabbits in captivity, however, are linked to the Romans, who were the first to use hutches. But scientists argue it took approximately 2,000 years before the differences between wild and domestic rabbits truly became visible. For bunnies, the most obvious physiological changes, especially in the coat color, weren't really seen or documented until the 1500s when breeding rabbits really came into full swing. During the Middle Ages, they were regarded as high status food and transported across Europe. These rabbits were mostly indistinguishable from their wild relatives since skeletal alterations between pet and domestic rabbits didn't take place until later. Skeletal changes like differences in size didn't come about until the 1700s. Rabbit domestication has primarily occurred by altering the frequencies of gene variants that were already present in the wild ancestor. This shows that the rabbit domestication primarily involved small incremental changes in many genes as opposed to drastic changes in just a few genes like we see with dogs or cats. By the 19th century, the Victorians began breeding rabbits for competitions and exhibitions. So this is when we begin to see differences in breed variations, which was a huge departure from just breeding rabbits solely for food and fur. It wasn't really until the Victorian era that we begin to see rabbits being viewed as actual pets in the household. In 1874, the first rabbit breeding clubs were established in Germany. And by the 20th century, rabbit breeding became a special hobby all over Europe. This is when breeders founded breeding associations and began to produce more and more unusual breeds, which differed in size, build, coat, color, and weight. 
Leif Anderson, an animal geneticist, explained that as rabbits were domesticated, humans needed to handle them in order to keep them constrained. This, in turn, allowed them to become less agitated around people. In 2018, Anderson published a groundbreaking study in which he and his team took a closer look to see if these genetic changes actually altered the shape of the rabbit's brains. Using high-resolution MRI imaging, they scanned the brains of both wild and domestic rabbits to pinpoint differences that could explain their behavior. They found that in eight pet rabbits that they scanned, their amygdala, a part of the brain that processes fear, was 10% smaller than in their wild counterparts. At the same time, the medial prefrontal cortex, the area that controls responses to fear, was 11% bigger in pet rabbits. The scientists also discovered that the brains of domesticated rabbits have less white matter than their wild counterparts, making them less able to process information and dampening that primal instinct to flee, which is why our pet bunnies aren't running away constantly over the tiniest little things. So what negative consequences has the domestication of rabbits had on its species? Some of the top disorders that plague pet rabbits that don't really plague wild rabbits are overgrown teeth, overgrown nails, obesity, and the propensity to develop GI stasis, which is a life-threatening condition where the gut of a rabbit stops moving thoroughly. All of this is associated with management and husbandry, which is why human interference in providing our rabbits with a great quality of life is so vital. For instance, proper medical care, adequate space and exercise, and a proper diet. So fast forward to 2022 and you got a rabbit like Lennon, a YouTube star, with a splotchy colored coat, cute, cuddly, and manipulative. You see, domestic rabbits have evolved to manipulate humans into giving them food and affection to ensure their survival. In humans, the cute response, which is triggered by looking at babies, releases dopamine and oxytocin in us. It plays a key part in social interaction and intimacy in our desire to nurture and protect our bunnies. So while rabbits have evolved to feel comfortable around us, we've also evolved to love them. All in all, it's an intricate science that really dictates the beautiful relationship that we have with our pet bunnies. So I hope this was informational to you all. Let me know in the comments below what you think about all this. I find it fascinating. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you all soon. Bye.